Diamond and Pearl went trending on Twitter. And if you search it, this is the top result. Because it's the source of the madness. Now, I already did a video talking about it yesterday. If you missed it, find it in the description down below or in a card or something. But yeah, Central Pokemon, they just came out and went, yo, we're confirming Diamond and Pearl remakes on Nintendo Switch. They don't have any proof. They don't have any real sources or evidence or any actual confirmation. They just did it and the internet went crazy. 21,000 retweets. God knows how many of those are quote tweets. We got thousands of comments and then almost 50,000 likes. This is what the people want. And even then, if you just go to latest, like people are still talking about it. So that's what this video is going to be about. I want to see what people are saying about Diamond and Pearl remakes. Going to give my thoughts, going to react. If you enjoy it, leave a like, join in on the discussion, share the hype with your friends. I just kind of like want to see what's going on here. Like what Pokemon Diamond and Pearl going viral on Twitter means and like how all the stuff is going to come together. So yeah, Nintendo everything, they naturally picked up on it. They're going to want to get that attention as well. And even then, like they're just covering what Centro Pokemon effectively made up and we're going to be getting a lot of reaction to that. Oh boy, can't wait to get sent to the grave by her. Okay, great. This is actually an amazing way. Like, I haven't looked at any of these tweets. I haven't, like, set up anything for the video. This is a great starting point because I've seen so many comments about that and I don't even know where it came from. Like, suddenly everyone's like, yo, uh, Cynthia's hard. And the weird thing is, I've been seeing a spike in recommended YouTube videos joking about how difficult Cynthia is. This was happening even before Jaden made her video about the Diamond and Pearl Nuzlocke. So, suddenly this just became like a thing where I was like, oh yeah, Cynthia was so hard, she just destroys everyone, it's all trauma and PTSD and we're gonna revisit it. But I don't remember any difficulty going up against Cynthia when I played Generation 4 for the first time. And I don't know why this is a narrative now. I don't know where it came from. It's just one of those things like once you play Pokemon the first couple of times, the game is effectively solved and then the difficulty doesn't really exist and you can't do anything to get any extra difficulty out of it. And that's also paired with a lot of comments that have been going on for a couple of years talking about how we need hard mode back in the games because Game Freak is making the new games too easy. Hard mode doesn't change anything. You just grind a little extra and it's effectively the same game and if you're ever in any kind of issue you can always item your way out of it or you use the X items like the boosting items. There's no challenge to Cynthia or really any champion if you give your starter Pokemon an X defense, an X speed and then like an X offensive and just roll her from there. That's really how every Pokemon game is. And it's not like this new thing or this new strategy. Even as a kid, you could do that back in the day. You could do that for the original Pokemon games. And that's like, they're just ways of cheating the difficulty. And if you're trying to make it harder for like Nuzlocke or harder for like the people that just want to be purists about it, well, the game isn't built that way. And there's nothing you can really do to change that except for adding artificial difficulty through weirdness like Nuzlocke, but that's like 0.1% of the community, so why would it Game Freak do anything to cater to that? I don't know, it's weird. And also, it's like another thing about Cynthia. And then, of course, again, that sentiment, they're going to make her an easy battle lol. Somehow, almost as many likes as the tweet that got the attention on this one. Which again, doesn't make any sense. And the funny thing is, Cynthia isn't a hard battle, so people are going to like remember their childhood being harder or something, or now they just understand Pokemon better, they're going to roll Cynthia and then blame Game Freak even though there's been no real difficulty change. I'm really not looking forward to that. Also, side note, I still don't understand this whole thing about like Game Freak making all the games easier. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee had some significant difficulty to it. If you miss too many wild Pokemon catches, the way that they scaled the levels to be higher in the late game and also throughout like different pacing of how the game worked, you could find yourself in some pretty problematic situations in the late game. Also, no EVs mean that you weren't getting some extra stats along the way. So that game could actually creep up on you in the difficulty. And then, this is a pretty good reply, I can confirm. According to sources close to the company, a remake of My Pokemon Ranch, originally released in 2009 for Nintendo Wii, is in development on the Nintendo Switch. The Pokemon company knows fans have been waiting anxiously, so it's coming out tomorrow. This is perfect and I'm so happy someone else caught on. Because if you go to the Centro Pokemon website and actually read the article, it's complete garbage. Because they just go, our sources 
make us confident that we can confirm Diamond and Pearl remakes, and then they just give a blurb about Diamond and Pearl. So, yeah, like, this doesn't matter. Being like, a remake of X game released in blank for the blank is in development for blank, like, that's just fluff. That means absolutely nothing to the actual confirmation or the news there. And then, P Pokemon Company knows we want Diamond Pearl remakes, so of course it's going to happen. Beautiful tweet. Pokemon fans, take more time for development of Pokemon games, Game Freak. Also, Pokemon fans, give us Sinnoh remakes just two years after Sword and Shield. God, I... Uh, no matter how many times I say it, it doesn't change anything because people just choose to be idiots, but Pokemon games have over three years of development for each game. That's like a three to four development cycle made by multiple teams inside of Game Freak. So when everyone's like, oh, Game Freak split up their teams, they're also making non-Pokemon games, that's why all the Pokemon games suck. No, 500 to 1,000 people work on each Pokemon game, and since it's done with, like, outsourcing from different companies, there's multiple groups working on multiple games at the same time. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was in development as Pokemon Sun and Moon development was being finished up. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon had some of the newer hires at Game Freak working on it because they were working off of base Pokemon Sun and Moon, therefore the more experienced members of Game Freak could be working on the start of Pokemon Sword and Shield as they were finishing up Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that had over a thousand people working on it. It's the most sub 80 IQ fallacious reasoning that people have. It's like, oh, we get a Pokemon game every single year. Therefore, Pokemon games are only in development for a year. That must be why they are bad. Game Freak, why don't you wait longer to put more work into Pokemon games? No, there's as much work put into Pokemon games as any other large title, AAA title published by anyone. Just because a game doesn't cater to you doesn't mean it's a bad game. Pokemon Sword and Shield, great Pokemon game. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, great Pokemon game. Game Freak set out to make the game they wanted to make, and they did that. Just because your bad take opinion about what Pokemon should be isn't in there, again, doesn't mean that it's a bad game. So we got that going on. Makes sense for a 25th anniversary, but I'm not getting my hopes up. Like, how many times have Diamond Pearl remakes been rumored? And here's another thing, like, I don't like it when people say rumored or leaked or anything like that. It's just a common thought because it has its own natural likelihood. Just because I think something doesn't mean it's a rumor that's now put out into the ether or anything like that. I don't know. Wow, this video is actually getting a lot, getting me a lot more tilted than I thought. I wanted to just kind of see the reactions to it. But once again, like, the Pokemon community is so fractured and in such a strange state that you can't go five tweets without seeing someone just being stupid. So, based on the video they released the other day, I'd almost say, nah, it's going to be Gen 5 remakes. Why? Also, another thing about the video, people are saying, like, oh, Sinnoh isn't represented in that 25th anniversary announcement video, therefore Generation 4 remakes. No. They actually show Mount Coronet, just because they don't spell it out, and because Red is there for some reason. Like, yeah, they did kind of make it weird, because, like, there's Mewtwo and Red, but that's still Mount Coronet. That's still Sinnoh. You could also see uh, Glaceon, Leafeon, and Rhyperior in that scene, so that's kind of how they're bridging that one together. I, I don't understand, like, why people just kind of jump to it. Sources, dude, trust me. At least a fair amount of the community is catching on. But, I mean, that's, like, 450 likes compared to the 46,000 likes, and if we go beyond like we're still on the nintendo everything tweet we're not even at like the source tweet also if you go to latest like people are just hype about this they they see that they see a leak source even though it's a unconfirmed leak source or a dubious leak source saying confirmed and they're just latching onto it guys since diamond and pearl remakes are on the horizon let's not forget about this underrated banger of a track people are just taking the information and running with it a lot of people are just like already convinced that we're going to get the announcement and it's going to happen Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes being the best games of 2021, that's good. But then, like I said, you can't go five tweets without just stupidity. I'll be upset about Diamond and Pearl remakes no matter what. They're on the Sword and Shield engine. Don't ruin my favorite Pokemon games. Don't re remake Diamond and Pearl. You'll just ruin it. So that's another thing, like, people are already, like, tilted by it. It's like, oh, they're going to show it and then I'm just going to hate it because I hate Game Freak now, yet they're still tweeting about Pokemon. I don't get it. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl for the Switch. Yes, please. I actually like this tweet though. My team, if the Diamond Pearl remakes got revealed, I think that, like this is the cool part of the discussion. We shouldn't be like, yes, 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 it's happening. Oh my God, I'm so hype. I love it, yay. Or just the immediate hate because everything is about hating Game Freak now since idiots have made that trendy. But I mean, I like this. I like, like what happens if, what are the plans if Diamond and Pearl remakes coming out? This is the cool stuff. You know, my team, Infernape, Greninja, Sceptile, Corviknight, Ampharos, and Garchomp. It's gonna be like, yo, we're, we're getting into that Sinnoh vibe, so we gotta have 
Infernape Garchomp there, but then we're mixing in some of that new stuff, some of the old, just kind of hanging out. Yeah, like, this guy's like, if it happens, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be down for it. Crazy how Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Remake is going to be Game of the Year 2021, unless Breath of the Wild 2 is out. I'm just trying to think about it, because, like, yeah, Animal Crossing, man, like, you couldn't compete with that. That that game was just, just took over the world. But now, Pokemon's time to step into that and just go for it. Because, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield were great, but you can also see where it doesn't get Game of the Year. It was just a great Pokemon game, but it didn't do anything to kind of transcend that. However, I feel like remakes, that's where you have like that opportunity for nostalgia and that opportunity to just kind of perfect something that was already great. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, best Pokemon games on 3DS. Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver, best Pokemon games ever. Like best main series Pokemon games ever. Pokemon Let's Go, still incredible Pokemon games as well. So now, this is where it's like all gonna to come together. And the more I just kind of think about Diamond and Pearl and what it was missing, if you just add modernization of Pokemon into that, it does really sound like the best Pokemon games or like has the potential to be game of the year material because the quality of life improvements for competitive that you find in Sword and Shield getting adjusted into Diamond and Pearl, that's great. But what I'm looking forward to is taking like that, that connectivity that we found in the wild area and then bringing that to the underground. Like we just didn't have the internet capabilities on the Nintendo DS to make that possible, but now Having that happen would kind of be the greatest thing ever. So there's a lot of ways that Diamond Pearl can just go right. And then just the other ways that people are getting into it, since Sinnoh remakes are probably confirmed, I drew the one character my friend got me to like Barry. That's pretty cute. But again, it's we're just kind of like in this weird stuff that's going on with it. Uh, I guess I have to refresh. Yeah, and then like the way Twitter refreshes everything. But I mean, what do we have on the immediate comments here? Because this is like the big one that blew up. That's probably a good sign. I have a private Twitter account that doesn't engage with anyone, but they're blocking me because they are deeply unwell. Oh, a fake league Poketuber yoinking someone else's art for attention. Eh, makes sense. Not really surprised. Please don't inject them with Gigantamax. Yeah, that's another thing that a lot of people are saying. Like, I don't care if there's Dynamax or not. It's a good mechanic. People just have, like, Game Freak Derangement Syndrome now, and it's causing them to just hate everything for no valid reason, and it's kind of stupid. So, we're seeing that, and then people are like, oh, this is where Megas come back. I mean, I'd prefer nothing over Megas. Like, just no gimmicks, that'd be pretty cool. But if Dynamax has to make its way in because Game Freak wants to keep selling that idea throughout the generation, then I think it'll still work out. And it can also make sense, depending on, like, how Sinnoh interacts. We have that, like, we have the purple swirl about, above Mount Coronet that represents, like, all the spookiness going on with the Dimension stuff. And it looks kind of similar to the Gigantamax and Dynamax energy. So, I mean, we can just kind of have that do its thing and maybe get justified. People treating it like it's confirmed. Let's go. Let's go. Shenanigans. Uh, let it not be like the Let's Go games. I actually want Let's Go Sinnoh more than the actual Sinnoh remix, but I'll take anything we can get. Also, Pokemon Let's Go Johto would be super hype. So, we got, like, a lot of announcements. We got a lot of cool stuff that can come up. And... Yeah, it seems like we're not getting too much of diversity in the discussion it's all don't give me Gigantamax Game Freak sucks so they're going to ruin this or they're treating something unconfirmed like it's confirmed and then like I said there's just the alt discussions I'd like to see talking about Cynthia talking about their team building talking about what it would mean if this is something that could happen instead of just like empty let's go so that's that's kind of disappointing but I mean as we can see there's just like uh as I as I talk about it. So yeah, this just got a lot of attention because it's something that a lot of people want. It makes sense. And as we can see from the quote tweets, this is where people are more treating it like it's real because it's it's spilled out of Pokemon. It's spilled out of the fake information bubble of Pokemon that's been going on for a couple of years into the mainstream. And if you're going to find like more mainstream people, like just the normal person getting sucked into this, it's going to be over a remake because Pokemon Diamond and Pearl might have been the last Pokemon game for a lot of people. Or like, when people cared about Pokemon more than they have in the last decade or so, so now this is what sucks them back in immediately, and they don't understand the context and all the deception, clickbait nonsense that's been going on for the last couple of years, and they don't know the context behind Centro Pokemon and what they mean for this. So yeah, this, this is where all the announcements are. This is where that social media hook is coming in. They're just like, happening! Woo, I gotta put the points out there on the internet. See, I'm cool. This is what I want too. So yeah, it looks like social media has made this one 
weirder than I expected. And I think, I guess that's just like the culture we're in now. We're not going to have like just normal Pokemon news and announcements and reveals and stuff. But we still just got to kick back and wait for the official information and see where it goes from there. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.